satire. <laughs> it's faces. The job of a satirist is to keep their feet on the ground when all others are, are, are losing theirs. It's forms. George Bush is a case in point. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a gift. The man looks like a chimpanzee. It's people. It's like taking my trousers down in public. It's purpose. It's deliberately exaggerating and falsifying. The spirit of satire. So just what is satire? Is it just about making us laugh or is there something more to it than that? Does it have to be political and have a purpose beyond humour? Can I just ask the men in the audience, um, were any of you by any chance on Princess Street on New Year's Eve watching the fireworks, talking to a really drunk girl? I was wearing this dress. No? We'll find your daddy. <laughs> Chappie Corsandi performing at this summer's Edinburgh Festival in Scotland. It's just in case of emergency. <laughs> Making people laugh, and she had me in hysterics, is something that runs in the family. Nothing too remarkable about that, you might think. Until you know that the political humour practised by her father, Huddy, resulted in a death sentence being issued against him by authorities in his native Iran. He now lives in exile in West London, where he continues to write humorous commentary about life under a religious dictatorship. If anyone is to embody the spirit of satire, it has to be someone who has put their life on the line for the sake of their art. Predictably, perhaps, along with his satirist son, Horst Andes made fun of the fatwa. It is not my fault. It is the dictator regime. I haven't done anything wrong. They are wrong, and they think... I'm not the right person to, to be in the country, even I'm not the right person to live outside the country. Mm. That's why they send me some people to Knock you do off. something. Knock you off. <laughs> <laughs> While satire continues to flourish in democracies, satirists working in dictatorships face imprisonment and worse. It is easy to go to Iran for me. It's difficult to come back from Iran, you know. In Iran, there is, honestly, there is freedom of speech. There is not freedom after speech. Hardy pokes fun at the rhetoric of the no, current no, no, regime. No. We'll hear more from the Hosanis later in the show. But next, to the real art of caricature. So, I mean, I was going to draw um, Bush, uh, which um, I always do like this. I will start with that. He's got these very, very close together eyes, like that sort of simian eyes almost. His nose sticks out there like that, and then he has this kind of almost monkey-like <laughs> uh, mouth there like that, and this wrinkled brow up above, and I always give him these huge kind of ears that stick out to the side like that. The cartoonist and illustrator Gerald Scarf, famous for his work with the rock band Pink Floyd. Scarf contributed illustrations for their film The Wall. I am a bit like an impressionist, you know, I have to get a feeling of the person. I have to, um, I sometimes hear the voice in, in the back of my mind when I'm drawing somebody or see the position of their mouth. Well, if it's Prince Charles, I, I, I feel a sort of restricted kind of uh, feeling, you know, and that... Um, helps the drawing. It's like impersonating on paper, really. A fellow British cartoonist is Steve Bell. We catch up with him at his home on the south coast. It's just, I start, usually start with a theme, so it's George and, George and Gordon. It was a tradition that George Bush has got, where he drives people around in a stupid-looking golf bag. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> That's completely ridiculous. So I can play around with that. Lampooning political figures provides us laughs at the expense of the political establishment. And it's that use of irony, sarcasm and caustic wit that certainly underpins the spirit of satire. But can exposing or denouncing certain subjects or characters be a step or a sketch too far?
Now, I always find the funniest stuff is the stuff where it feels as if it's breaching some kind of constraint. You know, it's just bordering on what you're not allowed to say. An extract from one of the most talked about shows at this year's Edinburgh Festival. Jihad, the musical. The show's writer, 25-year-old Zoe Samuel, may be tender in years, but she has an age-old appreciation of satire. And, uh, uh, you know, uses that perhaps, in, in this case, uh, we're, we're discussing Jihad the Musical, someone who um, creates the ability to laugh at a very dark and negative situation. <laughs> In early 2006, the dark situation quickly escalated into a global crisis when a Danish newspaper printed cartoons depicting the Prophet Muhammad. Supporters said the cartoons contributed to the debate over censorship. Critics called them blasphemous. It blew up into a big, the big story we all remember, which was, a, you know, it was entirely a creation. It was, it was a manufactured sort of controversy, both by the Danish paper that started it all by depicting the prophet deliberately, and, but also by the, the um, concerned clerics who zoomed around the Muslim world, sort of peddling this kind of, um, uh, slipping in a few more extreme cartoons well, at the time, to, just, just to whip up frenzy about it. And then you end up people, embassies getting burnt down, people actually dying in riots. You know, it does give you pause for thought. <laughs> Me, I've been drawing God since I don't know one of my oldest cartoon characters is a character called Lord God Almighty. No, just, to, just so there's no mistake, it's the Lord God Almighty. And I, so it's yeah, I, I, I put my hands up. Yes, it's blasphemy. That's because I'm an atheist. Provocation and controversy have always played a role in humour. It was here in Edinburgh that I first caught up with Shapi Hosandi in the minutes before she was about to take to the stage. The job of a satirist is to bring a, a bit of sanity into. In, into the world when, when things have gone a bit haywire. So I think satire is there to make you think. And then if you laugh afterwards, that's a bonus. <laughs> when you've dealt with death threats like Shappy's father, they pale into insignificance, but they still need to be addressed. Do you self-censor your stuff at all? There is uh, sometimes some point I don't want to. Mm. It is not because of the regime's censorship. There are certain boundaries that you adhere to. For instance, we would be very conscious about offending somebody's religious sensibilities willy-nilly for the sake of being outspoken. Because Censorship, or the threat of it, is obviously an issue satirists have to deal with constantly. Producer and writer Armando Iannucci believes freedom of speech provides a challenge for satirists. I don't really hold to the view that, you know, certain parts of the world you're totally free and other parts you're totally uh, censored. I, I think there's degrees of censorship in, in, in everything that you do, you know. You're always, the audience, you know, especially in terms of comedy, the audience is, is an editor. You know, if they don't laugh, then it isn't funny. And no matter how much you argue, if they're still not laughing, it really isn't funny. Well, no, I'm very lucky to live at, in, the, in the Western world, and I am able to, within reason, you know, draw what I want to and can attack any leaders or anyone I want to. Um, it's different in different parts of the world. We know that. Um, so I, I just consider myself as very, very privileged to be able to do that. Edinburgh has proved an inspiration in my quest for the spirit of satire. Shapi Khosandi's humour might best be described as hatched from her feelings of alienation and isolation as a young Iranian growing up in the UK. Inspired by her father's satirical lilt about the political and social foibles of a regime, he spent a lifetime lampooning. Perhaps it's Jihad the Musical or the poisoned quill of Britain's best cartoonists that ultimately provide the clues. But let's leave the last word to Hadi Khosani. Over lunch, he described the point of satire as simply this. It destroys the present image in order to make way for a better world.